Hey, Forsyth Country Day School. My name is Jeff Yalden. To the fifth graders, sixth graders, and seventh graders, I am honored and I feel privileged that I get to spend a few minutes with you. My friends, I am not looking to make this video perfect. I am not going to edit it. I am going to speak my heart to your heart. I've been working with your teachers and Ms. Gornick, one of your counselors, about delivering a presentation for you on mental health and self-care. And I don't want this message to be, listen, speaking is sometimes difficult for me. I live with mental illness. I'm diagnosed with major depression, bipolar type two, and post-traumatic stress disorder. I love this conversation. And I love it because the more I invested in my own journey, the more I became passionate about mental health being as important as your physical health. And what I want you to understand is there are people that come into your life for one of two reasons. They either come to plant seeds or they come to pick the fruit and they walk away. And when we're young and we're trying to figure this out, People come in and they go and we often say, well, what, what did I do? Did I do something? Am I to blame? You know, I, I think one of the first things that I, I want to ask you is who is the hardest person to get to know? And as you sit there and you're thinking, well, that's a pretty deep question. Um, maybe myself. Yeah. And I ask that question whether elementary school, middle school, high school, teachers, parents, doctors, professional athletes, and I always get the same answer, ourselves. And so as we get ready to talk, I want you to find not a fixed mindset, like, oh, I don't need to listen to this. Mental health is for crazy people. Mental health isn't for crazy people. Mental health is for everybody. And your mental health is as important as your physical health. Kind of like you need to drink water to stay hydrated. You need like self-care to stay motivated and present and aware. So I want to give you some tips that you can use in everyday life. So if it works for you, let's let this be not so much mental health, although I want to normalize that conversation. I think we need to normalize the conversation. And the more you and I are willing to talk about thoughts and feelings and our mental health, the more we're normalizing the conversation and giving people the opportunity to talk about what they might be thinking and feeling. And if people become more comfortable being uncomfortable talking about their feelings, then they're more apt to get the help that they might need. And the help is simple. It's coping skills. It's learning how to deal with things that might temporarily be broken. Like maybe you think your your parents are overstressed and they're working so hard and they like bring it home because they don't know how to let it go. Or maybe you at, at our age, schoolwork, friends, social media, the drama, the, oh my God, Gosh, I can't. So to be able to effectively deal with different emotions, set it aside so that later when you have maybe a club or an organization or school sports, you want to be your present best in everything you're doing. So this is really about life. This is about you. And I want you to find a growth mindset. And we're going to talk more about that but for me, a growth mindset is I'm always learning. I'm, I'm always wanting to ask questions to get the answer that I want. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But let's get started, my friends. And again, I'm Jeff Yalden. I'm honored and excited to have this opportunity of being a part of your life. So remember, these are seeds that are being planted. But as I say to most people, what are you going to do about it now? What are you going to do about it? So basically, the theme of my talk with you is five simple things. Just five. 
So mom, a dad, a teacher, coach might say, hey, so how was the talk with Jeff today? Well, he, he talked about five things. That's it. You can remember that. So before I talk about the five things to effectively live your best life, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, I want to talk about this. On a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being low and 10 being high, emotions, stress, I'm overwhelmed, I'm anxious, 10 high, 1 being real low. On an average day, day to day, where do you find yourself on a scale of 1 to 10? High emotions and stress or very low? That might be something that later on after this with your teachers, you might talk about it. Well, for most people, I find that they're like a six or a seven. And then I meet some people that are like 12, 13, 14. And I'm thinking to myself, dude, I said 10. And they're like, yeah, I'm way up there. <laughs> okay. And then there's some people that are just like one or two. And they're like, pizza. <laughs> okay. <laughs> If you're at like a six or above, it's safe to say that you might be a little overwhelmed with whatever is going on. That's okay. It's not necessarily a bad thing. But when we're overwhelmed and our stress or anxiety is high, we're, we're quicker to react. And that's one of the things that I want you to remember is when you react in life, Sometimes you like regret what you may have said or done. You wish you could take it back. So instead of reacting, I want you to learn to take a deep breath. And I want you not reacting, but I want you to learn to respond. Here's an example. Let's say you go home from school today and your little brother or sister, they think they're funny. And you watching TV and they come running up and they hit you. What do you do? You hit him back. <laughs> okay, not funny. And then your parents see you and they're like, what are you doing? And you're like, Ma, Dad, he hit me first. And your parents are like, but you're the older brother. You're the older sister. You're the older sibling. You know better. And you're like, bitch, 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 it's not fair. Reacting, you're going to get in trouble. Responding, that means that you've chosen to utilize what I call the four T's. Take time to think. The four T's. Take time to think. And when you learn to think before you respond, you're going to think about what is the right way to respond, what is the win-win situation, and you're also going to think about Dr. Stephen Covey, in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, great book. There's even a book for teenagers on it. One of the things he says is, seek first to understand, then to be understood. What does that mean? Well, let's talk about our parents. Our parents sometimes can appear like mean, and they're like bossy. Well, they're parents, and they're always telling you what to do. Take out the trash, feed the dogs, make your bed, blah, blah, blah. And we're like, really? Well, I want you to try and understand where a parent is coming from when they're asking you to do this or to do that. Maybe they're trying to teach you responsibilities. They're teaching you that you get what you work for. So instead of just reacting Let's look at why parents or teachers or friends or coaches ask us to do something. And I say the same thing when I'm talking to them, parents, teachers, coaches. Try and understand where our kids are coming from and what our kids are going through before you try and expect them to understand where you're coming from. And I get it. But I also get that the times we're living in today it's harder than ever to be a parent. It's harder than ever to be a teacher. By the way, kids, little 
side note here. If you get a chance, give your teacher like a fist bump, a high five, chest bump. Don't do that. That's awkward. But say thank you. Because as trying as education is today for you, it's equally trying for our teachers because they're trying to figure this out as well. And yet they got to be the leader and kind of pull you through this. So kind of give them a, hey, teacher, you're pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It might help you go from like a, a B to an A too because they're like, he's so nice. <laughs> okay, whatever. But anyway, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Where I'm going with this is, is simply this. I don't know what you may have been through in life. I mean, we all have a story. And I don't want you to be the victim. Meaning, situations, circumstances, whatever it might be. And we think, oh, wh woe is me. Like, everything always happens to me. My bad luck. Don't be the victim in life. I want you to choose to be the victor. That means, like, no matter what happens, was it your fault? Maybe it's not your fault. Nonetheless, it will always be your responsibility. Well, Jeff, if it's not my fault, then why am I responsible? I'm not saying you're responsible for what happened, but you're responsible for what is about to happen. That is how you respond through the situations. So it's not your fault, but moving forward, take responsibility for the best outcome. Take responsibility for your mental health, your physical health, your well-being, how you respond in situations. Take responsibility for your attitude, the choices you make, and your behavior. That is all I'm saying. And when you take responsibility and not avoid something, remember, perfection doesn't exist. It never has. All I want you is to just be better today than you were yesterday. I want you to be better tomorrow than you are today. And when you seek to do better, you seek to be better. Not the best there ever was, but just do you and do you the best you can. And I promise you, in life, you wake up, you dress up, and you show up, good things happen. I, I think that's, that's half the battle of life. And then you clap your hands, you snap your fingers, you shashay, shashay, and you say, I'm going to make it a great day. That's being the victor in life. Somebody might say something. Somebody might be rude. Somebody might be mean, bullying, whatever. People are mean. Again, don't be the victim. Be the victor. Don't be bitter. I want you to choose to become better. And oftentimes I say this. When we judge or criticize somebody or something else, I think that is because we don't spend enough time in the mirror looking at ourselves. My friends, there's so much I can tell you. I'll tell you this. My greatest regret in life is that I have hurt people in the process of learning about me. I've hurt people in getting to know who I am as a man that lives with mental illness. Growing up in fifth and seventh grade, I was diagnosed with a learning disability. And the more I invested in me, I come to realize it wasn't that I had a learning disability. It was that I had bipolar type 2. And, and I don't think we should diagnose kids when we're young. So again, I'm not the victim. I'm the victor. I pursued reasons of why this was happening, that was happening. I did this. I did that. And it got more clear as I got older. So again, listen situations and circumstances, they can expose wounds or they can build muscle. Sorry. I, sometimes I wonder why I work with young people. <laughs> I love you guys, man. I love you guys. But what I'm trying to get you to understand, 
Invest in you. Choose life, choose love, choose you, and choose to just grow. So we're not the victim, we're the victor. We're not bitter, but we're going to become better. We're not going to let things expose our wounds and our weaknesses, yet we're going to take everything and we're going to build muscle from it. Because everything that we go through in life, it teaches us. It shapes us to be the person that we strive to become. All right. I think I said enough there. Let's get on to the five things. Boom. Number one is simply hope. That's right. Hope. My friends, don't ever lose hope. But like, what does hope mean? Hope comes from having a purpose in life. But your fifth, sixth, seventh grade, I mean, like, Jeff, what purpose am I supposed to have? What about a purpose of kindness, a purpose of compassion, a purpose of empathy towards our friends, our family, our school community? What about a purpose of being an effective leader, a purpose of being a role model? What about a purpose of just a growth mindset that I want to learn every day? When you have a purpose and you strive every day for that purpose, that that meaning for your life, then hope is so easy to hold on to. Hope. Always hope that good things will happen. Always hope that you'll be pulled through any trying time. Always hope that if you and your friends get into a little splat or something, that our love and affection and and true friendship is going to pull us through. Hope. Don't ever lose hope. And hope is something that you want to hold on to and you want to teach other people. See, that's, I, I want you to not just have hope for you. And this isn't about you just being the best you that you can be. But I also want you to be the best you can be so that you can be this for others. Let me ask you a question. What is leadership? Leadership is influence. Nothing more, nothing less. It's your influence on your friends. It's your influence on your peers. It's your influence in the classroom. It's your influence every single day. Your influence is good. Your influence is bad. As a leader, we want to be more of good, positive. We want to be upbeat. We want to be supportive of one another. So we want hope, purpose-driven. We want the same for our friends and the same for our family. Number two personal responsibility. All right. Now listen, I don't want to sound like your mom or dad or a teacher or a coach or grandparents. I don't want to be the old guy that's talking about, oh, you need to be more responsible, kid. <laughs> I know you're probably looking at your friend right next to you. This guy's, this guy's like not right. <laughs> personal responsibility. I mean, what, what does that mean? It basically means being responsible for what you might say, what you might do, what you might think, being responsible for the choices you make. So you're not reacting, you're responding. That's taking responsibility because you don't want to react and get in trouble. So you're going to be responsible and you're going to respond the win-win and you're going to accomplish what you need without making it worse or anything. So personal responsibility. Matter of fact, I'll tell you, I have a nephew, Gus. That's his name. Why the parents would name their son Gus, I don't know, but that's what they named him. Gus is in 10th grade. He's six feet, 11 inches tall. He has a wingspan of seven feet, four inches. Does he play basketball? Yes. 
He plays at IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida. They're the number three seed in the country. He's already received over 24 Division I basketball scholarships. If you're on Insta, you can follow him at Gus Bus. Yep, that's my nephew. Kid's legit. The kid's a beast. Savage. They were playing a game in Virginia a couple weeks ago. The next morning, they were supposed to be up and on the bus at 7.30. Well, Gus and his roommate didn't make the 7.30 time to be on the bus. They got in trouble. And so what do coaches do for elite athletes? They pretty much run you. I'm talking to Gus, and I said, Gus, what happened? And he said to me, he said, I, you know, the coaches didn't wake us up. Personal responsibility. I said, Gus, you play for one of the top basketball powerhouses in the country. You've been offered some 24 Division I scholarships already. Why don't you set your own alarm and not have to wait for people to be where they should be, doing what they should do at the time they should be doing? But you, you take ownership so that you're where you should be, doing what you should do at the time you should be doing it. Does that make sense? So for you, I want you to take responsibility homework, take responsibility, make your bed, take responsibility, be appreciative and thankful to your mom and dad for providing for you. Be appreciative and show that you're appreciative for your teachers for loving and guiding you and being present all the time. I want you to take responsibility for your life and responsibility for what you want in life. Moving on to number three, education. I want you to be responsible for your education. Now, I know you go to a great school. That's only a part of it. But you can go to a great school, not do your homework, not be present, have a fixed mindset, and what? Exactly, nothing. Versus a growth mindset, education. I want to learn every day. And education isn't just within the classroom. Education is, well, for young people today, you've got the internet, You've got social media, you've got Snapface, you've got Insta, you've got TikTok, you've got YouTube, Google. Everything you want to know is a question away. And so you can spend time looking up gaming, which I'm cool with that, balance and boundaries. Or you can spend time looking up, but well, what are you passionate about? You know one thing I love? I love the trade industry. I'm a mental health professional. I work in school communities, suicide prevention, counseling. But one of my self-care is I love woodworking. And so I might spend time at night on YouTube looking up woodworking, like how to build a table or how to build furniture or something. Education is, is every day. And what you're going through right now with this pandemic, having to learn in school, having to learn home, we're learning about Zoom, we're learning more about technology. Take it all in. And it might be frustrating. And it is frustrating. But remember, don't avoid. Step up. Learn. 1% better today than yesterday. And when you don't give up, you're going to end up finding out you're going to be much further ahead. And a lot of this technology you're having to learn today is going to come into play later on. So education, make it important. Am I telling you A's and B's? I'm not saying that at all, no. You know what I do want? I want you to show up and do the best you can. And if the best you can is a B, a C, a D, then I'm proud of you. But if you just cram to get an A on a test, and like, yep, I got A's, and then you forget everything? Why? That... Show up every day, do the best you can. To me, that's education. I'm 50 years old. I'm still in college. I'm working on my master's now. I'm, I want to go for my doctorates. And listen, I graduated high school at the bottom of my class, 128 out of 133 students. But the older I get, the more value I saw in wanting to learn. So every day, my friends. Number four, self-advocacy. What does that mean? Well, it simply means this. If you have a question, don't ever be afraid to ask the question. And I promise you, 
the more you invest in asking the question, the more you'll find that the answer will arrive. But when we're young, we're afraid to, teach. I, I have a question. We're afraid to ask questions. Why? Well, because we're worried about what people might say or think or what they might, well, you're dumb. You're No, no. You know, the reality is when you ask a question, they say some 45% of the people around you are asking the same question, but they're afraid to ask the question for the same reason you're afraid to ask the question. Remember when I asked who's the hardest person to get to know? We said ourselves. <laughs> same thing. So self-advocacy, ask the question and be tactful, be polite, be respectful. Don't expect anybody to be like, well, oh, okay, here. No, just you show up with grace, you ask politely, and you will get what you're asking for. Number five is support. This is what I want to finish up on. Support, my friends. Listen, we can't do this life alone. We need our friends, we need our teachers, we need our coaches, we need one another. And my friends, I, I wanna talk a little bit about our well-being. Because today, with everything that's going on, we're living at a level of stress that is higher. We're trying to figure out who we are, what we want, and that leads to more anxiety. And we become so overwhelmed sometimes trying to, to process this learning curve. So I wanna say this your support network is really important. And that is your close friends. And that is also being able to talk to your close friends about thoughts and feelings. And to the young men that are listening, it's okay to talk about feelings. Somebody might ask, how are you doing? And our typical response is fine. Well, what does that mean? 